Hi, it's Glassbox here and today we're finally going to move away from all of this manual downloading jars and manually compiling and manually running Cucumber and command line and actually move on to using Maven and using it through an IDE. Uh, why? Because it is easier. It is easier to do things via Maven and it is easier to do things through an IDE. Now, this is potentially a very uh, arguable statement I've just made, but there is a reason why I've been doing stuff manually up to date. It is to give you guys an understanding of how to actually run this from the command line and use a command line to actually write features, to actually write code. Uh, you don't always have access to an IDE, not every single time and sometimes it's just easier to do things through command line when you want to consider doing things on say some kind of CI environment like Jenkins or something through a Linux box so on by now you guys should have a really good understanding of how to do things on the command line but now we're going to move away from all of that and actually do things through Maven and through an IDE. So first things first, what is Maven? Maven is a build tool which can be used to build projects and manage their dependencies. What this means is you can actually use Maven to automatically download all the jars that you need without you having to go and fish for them all over the internet. You don't have to go to Maven repository, you don't have to go to any Selenium site, nothing. You just ask Maven what you need and Maven will try to do its best to try and get it for you. It also downloads everything that you ask it to download and puts it in the class path automatically. So this makes your life a lot easier. Why? If new versions of a JARs come out or if dependencies come out or if one JAR doesn't work and, and, and various other things, all you have to do is tell Maven what particular version you want of a particular jar and it's all done for you. So if a latest version of a jar comes out and you really quickly want to test it without losing the older version you are running, you can do that. And if the newer version doesn't work for compatibility issues or, or code backwards compatibility issues, whatever it is, you can easily revert back. So using something like Maven actually makes your projects much more manageable and sustainable over time. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use Maven. Now, I also said that in this tutorial, we're also going to use an IDE. Why is it important to use an IDE or what's the point of using an IDE? An IDE or Integrated Development Environment is the technical term given to a product which allows you to write code uh, through a user interface. An IDE also allows the same user to download plugins, which can also allow faster customization of the IDE. So, for instance, let's just assume we downloaded an IDE that doesn't support Cucumber or some other language like Ruby or Git. Usually that IDE provides some kind of plugin. Uh, every IDE has like a plugin market that you can just install in the IDE and the magically that particular technology is then supported. So life can be easy if we use an IDE. So the first thing we're going to do is actually download an IDE. Now on this particular machine I don't have an IDE installed, not at this point in time anyway. So I'm going to go to Google and download Eclipse. Now, why have I decided to go with Eclipse? Why should I use Eclipse over other IDEs? There are other IDEs available, uh, IntelliJ and some others. The reason I'm going with Eclipse is simply because I feel that Eclipse is one of the IDEs that is used by a lot of developers, a lot of test engineers, any technical job you can think of where you have to program in Java. I think Eclipse is probably the most famous IDE. 
there may be a number of reasons why probably because of its open source or its customization abilities whatever it is maybe it's just a sheer love and passion for eclipse i think eclipse is the most used ide and therefore i'm just gonna go with what my heart desires on this and it is to use eclipse i would have liked to have used maybe a different ide just to add a little bit of flavor but let's go with eclipse if we have to change IDEs, and maybe in a future video I might experiment using Cucumber with other IDEs, but for now we're going to use Eclipse. So pick this Eclipse IDE for Java developers and pitch whichever OS you have. I'm gonna go with 32-bit. Now once Eclipse has downloaded, if you go to the download location, you will notice that Eclipse is actually a zipped folder. Now something with Eclipse, unlike the usual traditional download process where you download an exe and you end up installing the whole thing with eclipse usually that isn't the case what you usually do is end up downloading the entire application in a zipped file so what we're going to do is just extract the file uh, here with your eclipse folder unzipped uh, i usually move it to my c drive so i'm going to do that And then I'm going to go into the folder and I'm going to run the Eclipse application. So at the point of downloading Eclipse, so I have Mars.2. Okay, so once Eclipse has fully loaded, you should see a screen that looks something like this. You should see a welcome screen. With Eclipse now downloaded, the first thing we want to do is actually download a plugin called Cucumber Eclipse. And that plugin will allow us to run our feature files. To do this, we're going to select the help and then install new software. And we're going to say add. And in here, we're going to add in a URL, which will allow us to download a Cucumber plugin. So the URL is cucumber.github.com forward slash cucumber dash eclipse forward slash update dash site and hit OK and you should get this filter here. So just hit the checkbox and say next. So at the point of recording this video, the version I have is 0 .0 0.0.15.2016, uh, so on. So I'm just going to hit next again. Uh, accept this. I'll give you a second to really quickly read it. So if you wish, pause the video and read it. Once you're happy, hit finish. And then let Eclipse restart in the background. Uh, if you get any security warnings like this, just hit OK. Okay, so it looks like the plugin was installed. Great. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually create a Maven project. So to do this, we're going to say File, New, and we're going to select Other. And in the filter box, we're going to type in Maven, and we're going to select Maven Project. We're going to keep this as the default. Next. For group ID, we're going to select com dot the test room, and for artifact, we're going to say cucumber um, underscore project, and hit finish. And let's just close the welcome window. So you should now have a window that looks similar to this. This is where we can start to finally write in our feature files and step definition classes and so on. The first thing to look at is this pom.xml file. This pom.xml file is where all of our jars are basically contained. What that means is this is where we tell Maven what particular version and what particular jar we want. So if you refer to 
previous tutorials where we went to somewhere like Maven repository. And we search for jars such as, so if we go back to our jars folder. So if we search for a jar called Cucumber Core 1.2.4. And we get that. You can now supply this information here, which will grab that particular jar and download it for us. If we copy this and put it in the POM file, and if we open up Maven dependencies, when we save this, at some point in the background, Maven will go off and download the jars and if you've noticed it's literally just downloaded all the jars for that one particular jar Now this is great now. Let's just say we delete this and save it Notice that Maven has now deleted the jars automatically so this is why Maven is really powerful We don't have to download anything. It does it for us so let's go ahead and get all the jars we need. So we needed Cucumber Core, then there was Cucumber JVN depths. And we're going to get this version here. We will also need Gherkin. And we're just going to copy this. And finally, Cucumber Java. And now, if we save this, notice that. Maven has automatically downloaded all the jars for us in a fraction of a second. This is one particular reason why Maven is so powerful. If you now want to change a version, all you do is change this number, save the POM, and Maven will do the rest for you. Great. So now we have a really powerful way of downloading all the dependencies without actually going and downloading any dependency. So the next thing we want to do is actually create a feature file. And we're going to do that in the source test Java directory here. So if you right click on here and say new, and we're going to say file. So let's call this exactly what we did for our previous tutorial, which was my first feature dot feature and click finish. Now notice Cucumber has given some example data we don't want any of this so we're just going to get rid of this but more importantly it's recognized this file as a feature file so this is now the plugin doing the work so what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to our project and the feature file we wrote we're just going to copy paste the whole contents into here Let's open this with something like Notepad. And the formatting isn't very great, so I apologize. So it's... But apparently when we paste the whole thing in, it's fine. So that's good. And we're going to save it. Great. So now notice that Cucumber has actually highlighted a lot of these things for us. So now if we right click on this, we can see that there is a run as and then cucumber feature option. So if we hit this, notice that cucumber says that it tried to run these steps, but it was unable to find any step definitions for the test steps. So this is good. This is us almost repeating an earlier tutorial where we tried to run a test step when we had missing step definition code. So let's do that. Let's take the next step, which is to actually create 
a step definition class. Now we're going to cheat a bit and all we're going to do is copy in the step definition Java class into this directory. So I'm hoping just a drag and drop will do it. Great. It looks like it did copy in the file. So if we go in, we can see that there are errors around WebDriver, even though we have the import error around WebDriver. Now, quick quiz. Why do you think this is? The reason we have these errors is because in our POM file, we have not supplied any dependency for WebDriver. So let's go ahead and delete all of this first. And if we hover over, say, WebDriver, notice it doesn't give us any option to import anything in because the class, or rather the JARs for this particular WebDriver class is not currently included in the POM file. So what we need to do is add in that dependency. And the dependency we want to add in is this org.selenium hq.selenium 2.5.3.0. So let's just copy in the dependency. And save it. And notice it's now downloaded a whole heap of dependencies all related to Selenium, including Chrome driver, including Edge driver, Safari, and many others. If we now go to our feature file and hover over WebDriver, we should see an import statement. So let's import for WebDriver, for Firefox, and the Buy class. And let's change the package to match this, which is that there. Great. So once we save this, we can now see that there are no more errors. So now if you go back and run your feature file again, notice that it was able to open up the web browser, click on the page title, and then print out the page title. And that's it. We have now successfully transitioned all the stuff we've done and we are now running the exact same code but through Maven and Eclipse. So really quickly, at the beginning of this video, I said running things in Eclipse means that it will make your project more manageable, more easier, more sustainable, all of the big fancy words. And I hope you can see the truth in that. By doing things this way, we don't have to go and download anything anymore. We can obviously still go through Maven repository and look at the dependency versions and all of that stuff. But the important thing is a lot of this now is taken care for us. You can also see that when we downloaded, say, this InfoCooks jar, this particular jar was also downloaded. However, we've also defined it here. So you can also effectively delete this, save it, and this won't make a difference here because we already have that jar. It looks like the Gherkin jar was included as part of the Cucumber core. So using Maven and an IDE makes life a lot easier to write things, to experiment with things, and to manage dependencies. You can follow the text version of this tutorial on my site, thetestroom.com, if you prefer to read along instead of seeing this video. And that's it for this video. Until next time, ciao. Hey guys, thanks ever so much for watching my video as I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest videos and kindly like and share my videos as this is one of the best ways for me to grow my ever evolving channel. If you have any ideas or suggestions for this video series, then let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, ciao.